Alphabet, Google's parent company is racing toward a $4 trillion valuation. And by the time you are watching this video, we won't be surprised if Google has already crossed that line. Good evening and welcome to Front Page on AIM Network, India's video first AI and tech newsroom. Tonight, we are watching something historic in real time. Alphabet, Google's parent company is racing toward a $4 trillion valuation. And by the time you are watching this video, we won't be surprised if Google has already crossed that line. Please make sure to like, share and subscribe before we dive into this very interesting story that is unfolding as we speak. So, the question is, what just happened? On Monday, Alphabet's stock jumped over 5% to hit a record high around $315 to $330 a share, pushing its market cap to roughly $3.8 trillion and putting it within striking distance of the $4 trillion club. Only three companies have ever touched that number. Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia. And if Alphabet joins them, it will be the fourth member of the most exclusive club in markets today. Alphabet's stock is up 70% this year, outpacing even other AI darlings like Microsoft, Amazon and on some days, Nvidia itself. What makes this move remarkable is how quickly sentiment flipped. After the launch of ChatGPT in 2022, many investors genuinely believed Google had lost its AI edge, despite inventing much of the core transformer technology. So let us fast forward to late 2025. Gemini 3 is getting strong early reviews. Google Cloud has turned from an also ran into a very serious growth engine. Berkshire Hathaway quietly took a stake and like it or not, Wall Street still treats Berkshire buys as a huge confidence signal. And on top of all of that, Google navigated the big United States antitrust cases without being broken up. A court, if you remember, ruled its search business as an illegal monopoly, but stopped short of forcing structural separation. So, so instead of being punished, Alphabet is being re-rated as one of the key winners of the AI decade. Now, layer on the real catalyst behind today's move. Reports that Meta is in talks to spend billions of dollars on Google's TPUs, tensor processing units, starting as early as next year. So if that deal lands, it changes three things at once. Meta diversifies away from NVIDIA, its biggest current supplier. Google's TPU business goes from internal tool to, well, external product line. And for the first time, we see a credible path for NVIDIA's data center dominance to face real pricing pressure. NVIDIA's response to this was, well, unusually public. The company put out a tweet saying, we are delighted by Google's success. End quote. And reminding everyone that NVIDIA is a generation ahead of the industry and the only platform that actually runs every AI model everywhere. But if you read between the lines and if you actually watched NVIDIA's stock price dip while Alphabet climbed, you can clearly tell. The market finally believes Google's TPUs are a very serious competitive threat and before we jump into the conclusion of, oh, this is the start of the AI bubble bursting, which many actually mainstream media would obviously dive in at first sight, let's talk about the chart on your screen. Yes, which by the way, has been trending on social media. So on the left, you see NVIDIA's merchant model. On the right, Google's vertically integrated TPU model. And here's the core difference. In simple terms, the NVIDIA tax, yes, NVIDIA sells GPUs like H100 Blackwell to cloud providers. On top of manufacturing and research and development cost, it adds a huge margin, often 70% to 
or more. AWS, Azure, Google Cloud then pass that cost on to customers through high GPU instant prices. Every AI startup, every enterprise lab, every research team is effectively paying this NVIDIA tax on every training and every inference token. Now, for Google's vertical integration, Google plays a different game. It designs TPUs in-house. Broadcom helps turn those designs into physical chips and packages them. TSMC fabricates them. And then Google runs those TPUs inside its own global data center network because Google owns the chip, the network, the data center, and the cloud stack. Doesn't need to earn a separate vendor margin on the chip itself. Internally, TPUs are priced at or near manufacturing cost. Externally, Google can now use them to offer aggressively priced AI compute on Google Cloud. That's actually the strategy. Don't beat NVIDIA only on speed, beat them on economics. Training frontier models usually happens on the fastest hardware money can buy. This is where NVIDIA shines. But once a model is trained and deployed, the real spending shifts to inference, running those models billions of times a day. Let us try to break this down and, well, think of it like this. Training is a Formula One race. Inference is a fleet of trucks running every day on highways. Or, if I want to give you, well, a cricket reference, which, well, by the way, is quite often my favorite. Training is like the World Cup final, high stakes, rare, and you bring your absolute best players. Inference is, well, like an IPL season. Match after match, ball after ball, where consistency, stamina, and cost matter far more. Well, let's not get talking about the auctions as yet. Anyway, that's a different episode altogether. Anyway, let me give you another reference, something Bengaluru folks will be able to relate to and how. Training is like a Bengaluru VIP convoy, which most politicians usually travel in. Fast, rare, high priority. Inference is like BMTC buses, running non-stop, carrying millions every day, and where efficiency decides everything. So, as AI matures, analysts estimate that up to 90% of total AI spend will go to inference, not training. That is basically into your BMTC buses, the IPL season, and fleet of trucks, and not into the VIP convoy, the World Cup final, or Formula One race. That only elite who trains their models use. So in that world, the winner is not the one with the absolute fastest chip. It's actually the one with the lowest cost per token at scale, while still being reliable and easy to program. And that's exactly where Google is positioning DPUs. Stable, power efficient, deeply optimized for matrix math. Integrated with Gemini, Search, YouTube, Workspace, Android, and now potentially Meta's data centers and third-party cloud customers. So, if Google keeps cutting inference cost and passes those savings through cloud pricing, the entire AI compute economy tilts. Put all of this together. A search and ad business still throwing off massive cash flows. A cloud division suddenly seen as a growth driver, not a laggard. A maturing Gemini model family integrated across all Google products. A credible plan to become the low-cost provider of AI compute via TPUs. And now, potential mega deals with customers like Meta and expanded partnerships with Anthropic and others. This is very important to highlight that it's not just Meta. Even OpenAI very quietly tested Google's TPUs this year. A sign that the biggest AI developers are exploring alternatives to NVIDIA's GPU monopoly. So you don't just get a story about, well, Google's catching up in AI. You get a story about Alphabet 
owning both sides of the AI stack. The application layer, which is search, ads, YouTube, Android productivity. The infrastructure layer, chips, networks, and cloud capacity, which we have, of course, exclusively covered here on front page. Please make sure to check it out if you haven't already. And that's why the market is willing to take Alphabet close to $4 trillion and maybe beyond, even as some investors warn about an AI bubble. Doesn't matter. For Indian startups, GCCs and enterprises, this AI compute war is not abstract. If Google really leans into cheap TPU-backed inference, we could see lower prices for running large models in Google, cloud regions close to India. More AI native services built directly into workspace, Android and YouTube that are cheaper to operate. And over time, less dependence on scarce NVIDIA GPUs, which today are both expensive and very hard to secure at scale. For NVIDIA, this doesn't mean collapse. They will likely remain the default choice for frontier training and for organizations that need the most flexible general purpose accelerators. But their ability to charge extreme margins forever will be tested if hyperscalers like Google, Amazon and Microsoft scale their own chips and customers like Meta start committing billions to alternatives. And now, as always, it is time for the front page take. And here it is. So here is how we see it. NVIDIA sells the generators. Google is quietly building the electric grid. The market has been obsessed with who has the fastest chip. But the real disruption might come from who can deliver compute the cheapest at planetary scale. For years, if Google succeeds with TPUs and aggressive cloud pricing, AI models will become cheaper to run. More developers will choose TPUs by default. And NVIDIA's tax on the AI economy will slowly shrink, not disappear, mind you, but shrink. Alphabet's march towards $4 trillion is about a shift in AI power and not just about another big tech stock going vertical. From one company selling the most coveted chips to another company trying to control the entire stack from silicon to search box. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Is Alphabet the most underrated AI infrastructure story of this decade or are we inflating another bubble that ends like the dot-com era? We are reading everything, bringing all of this live to you. And if this breakdown helped you understand what's really happening behind the $4 trillion headline, please like, share and subscribe. Takes you a second, but it helps us keep doing independent, India-first AI-driven journalism. Episode after episode, chart after chart, number after number.